provide an education that encourages continual progress, the improvement of one's abilities, expansion of one's interests and knowledge, and the growth of one's character. Call to order, please. Roll call, Joy. Linda Duncan. Here. Tony Hurd. Here. Gary Maurer. Here. Rob Metzger. Here. Tara Wayne. Here. Thank you, Joy. Agenda approval. Any additions, changes, or corrections, Mr. Burnett? Well, only one, and that's under the public forum. Mr. Grunder today was sick, along with several other people. And with Mr. Grunder not being at school, they're not going to be able to present and talk about their history oh, class that they teach during the skinny. So okay. unfortunately, they are going to get bumped to All right. February. Okay. Okay. Otherwise, everything else looks good. All right. I make a motion to approve the agenda as amended. Second. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, we'll go to the minutes approval. We'll do the December 11th, 2017 calendar hearing first. Make a motion to approve the minutes of the December 11th calendar committee. Second. All those in favor, Carrying. please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next to the December 11th regular meeting minutes. Would you approve the December 11th regular meeting minutes? Second. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Lastly, the December 21st work session. Make a motion to approve the minutes of the December 21st work session. Second. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. <laughs> All right. Public forum. Yeah, Mr. Grant Harkness is here tonight, and he's done some work here recently as far as looking at an observatory-type project. Uh, you can see he brought in one of his uh, tools with him tonight, which is pretty impressive. And some of the kids, I thank them for coming. It's nice to have... Uh, a few more audience members uh, at our board meeting. So with that, uh, he's going to present and hear from the kids and uh, turn it over to him. Thank you all for having us all here tonight. What we're here to present to you tonight is the Wilton Observatory Project. The Wilton Observatory Project is a proposal that an observatory be built on the grounds of the Wilton Community School. This observatory will open up the eyes and the minds of children in ways that very few humans ever get the ability or the experience to do. What this is right here is the Mead LX600 ACF. It's a 12-inch telescope. It's fully computer controlled. Anything that you wish to do with this telescope, you can pretty much do it. These students will have the ability to look at the sun in two visual wavelengths. They will have the ability to listen to the sun. For the advanced classes, they can actually do comparative analysis in real time. So they'll be able to not only see it, but hear it. When they see an explosion, they'll get to hear what an actual solar flare sounds like. The advanced classes can do comparative analysis. Of the younger classes, they can actually go out. This observatory will present them with 24 hour a day availability because we're going to incorporate the solar and the deep sky, the nighttime viewing as well. We've incorporated a modular approach to our uh, to our design here, and with the modular approach, that simplifies the teacher interaction with the, with the uh, gear, which will be amazing. So what this modular approach will allow the teachers to do is through basic and simple instructions, we can teach them, we can instruct them, and proceduralize its operation so any teacher will be capable of coming out here, turning it on, and accomplishing whatever it is they wish to accomplish in that module whether it be a skinny, whether it be a full class, whether it be after school, whether it be on a weekend. And it is our full, we have, uh, we are presenting ourselves, myself and my wife, we are going to present ourselves for continued material and financial and physical support to the observatory for the foreseeable future. So we live a half mile away and we will make ourselves available at any given time throughout this entire process. So without further ado, We'll have our video. This is awesome. Okay. I think I'll turn the lights down. Mm
So, I can speak on this for hours, and I know we don't have hours. But what this will allow students to do is explore the universe and the world around us, the mystery and the majesty of the skies above, the same skies that we've all looked at day after day, night after night. We've all looked, we've all wondered, we've all wanted to peer further, and this will allow the students in the Wilton Community School District to explore that same space that we have all stood in awe of in ways that are generally only reserved for universities. And one, ask, one might ask, why would you apply that to a K-12 environment? My question is, why wouldn't you? If given the opportunity to explore, if given the opportunity to cultivate the minds, if given the opportunity to help broaden their horizons and help to cultivate at a younger age the marvelous minds that have come out of these classes and the amazing kids that we have for you today. The question is, why would the opportunity not be taken? So, without further ado, we have statements from our observatory ambassador group. And our observatory ambassador group is a, is a group of students who, with great courage, have decided to step out and make statements on this project because they truly believe in it. They have. So I'm I'm Dory Smith. I'm the school counselor, and I know some of you haven't met me yet. So hi, I'm in the elementary school. I have a few statements from teachers that I wanted to read first, and then I have um, our elementary kids are going to present, and then our kids are going to present. Um, third grade teacher said, "I think this would be a great asset to our third grade classroom. We obviously will be able to advance our science curriculum with it. We study weather and climate in third grade. I hope." See. I hope that would help explain how our weather satellites, teams the sciences and computers work together to save lives and property by predicting where large storms will hit and giving people time to get out of the way. I also hope that it can help us view those moments when we have an eclipse or phases of the moon, which are very rare. Fifth grade teacher said, what an opportunity the students in Wilton will have that most students wouldn't. I'm not a science teacher, but I've seen what our science teacher Mrs. Moritz does during her lessons in the science club that meets on a regular basis. I can only imagine that what this could enhance. What a win-win for our school community. I like how she pulled some seven habits stuff in there. Um, we have a sixth grade teacher who said, this is an exciting opportunity for Wilton and the students. Although I don't teach science, I feel that this would make learning about our solar system, weather, climate, etc., so exciting and engaging for the students for many, many years to come. The observatory would give Wilton students an experience that would be unique and different, and not one that most kids would be able to say that they have had. So I'm going to start with my youngest ambassador. Hey, Ben. Because Ben has um, Ben has had the opportunity to utilize this equipment. And so I want him to just kind of give you a first hand of what he thinks about it. So Ben, can you tell them what it's like to look through the telescope? These, these people over here. These people. Hi. There we go. Can you tell them what it's like? Or tell them like one of your favorite things you've seen about that. Have you liked seeing the sun? Fright. Or <laughs> have you liked seeing different planets, like seeing Mars? What's your favorite thing to see? Oh, well, that's okay. What have you seen through it though? Can you tell us? My favorite cluster is on the cluster. His favorite cluster is the wild duck cluster. It's a cluster that exists in the southern sky, and it's rich with color, and he fell in love with that. Was, we had explored several different targets initially, and uh, wild duck cluster was one that he chose uh, night after night whenever we'd set up the telescope. That was the uh, target night after night he wanted to go after, so it so, was uh, really captivated him. So I have a question about that for you. So when I think about looking through a telescope and seeing stars, I think of white stars, dark sky. Is that what it looks like when you look at that cluster? No. What does it look like? It looks like millions of colors. Millions of colors. Okay. That's really cool. That's exciting. Thank you, Ben. Ben is, our, ben is incredibly tall, but he is our youngest ambassador. He's a second grader. So he's very, very tall. Mr. Burnett, there you go. He's going to get to run for one of these days. Our third grade ambassador is Tyler Burke. observatory make all kids out of their shells because most kids love learning about cool and new things. I like, I think boys and girls and the girls will like this a lot. Honestly, most boys like exploring things and they might say star exposed. I am a girl who loves space and I think this would encourage more girls to develop a passion for learning about space. We could 
discover a new star and you look at something else today. The list goes on. Learning means so much to me, and I hope you can get this observatory so other kids can experience the fun of learning about space. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good job. All right. Cora. This is Cora Marine, and Cora is a fifth grader. My name is Cora Marine. I'm in fourth grade. It would be really cool to see what is happening in space in that moment. For example, to see a star explode would be really cool. Even though some kids may not be interested in it at first, this could get them excited. At first, I wasn't really into it, but now I'm excited about it. I'm looking forward to learning something new. The observatory would also build school spirit and get kids more excited about coming to school. It would be something to look forward to. And Grayson, you're going to have to help me say your last name right. Can you tell me? You, you can do it for, for me. Hi, my name is Grayson Hawthorne, and I am in fifth grade. I think we should build this observatory because it will help kids throughout all ages, elementary, junior high, and high school, to get involved in astronomy and space. It will get kids to see actual things, not little famous gods to represent actual stars. We will see actual stars, comets, asteroids, and all types of amazing things. Not many kids are interested in astronomy, and this observatory will help more kids get into it and start learning more about it. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Clifton, this is Clifton Brown. He's a sixth grader. Hello, I am Clifton Brown, as you know. Uh, I am not going to do it as a science perspective all the time, but I am an artist. And taking pictures with this, it could be so much better than actually using like images we find on the internet. We could make things, we could make huge posters to make people be inspired about this. But also, I love science, and the biggest nerd in the entirety of sixth grade. <laughs> Only one that wears a colored shirt. <laughs> Nerds with feather. <laughs> Um, but I absolutely love science and space. It's so interesting because it's so vast and it goes on forever and it's made of my favorite state of matter, plasma. I have a favorite state of matter. <laughs> um, well, I just, it's so cool. <laughs> Stars, space, everything. Who couldn't love it? I don't know. Thank you. Uh, so we also have ambassadors from the junior high and high school. Um, my name is Richard Beckley, Rick Beckley. I'm the high school science teacher. I do physics, earth science, intro to chem and physics, and also last year I taught astronomy with Mr. Bean. And this year I'm teaching archaeology as a skinny as well. Uh, today we've got three high school and junior high ambassadors with us. Three others cannot make it today, two are sick. A lot of that going on right now. But first we're going to have Gavin Freeman talk about what he thinks of this project. All right, so I just want to start off saying I'm really excited for this because I love space. I liked it since I was like really little. When I was like five years old, I got a telescope and like a little soundboard where you click on the fans it tells you facts about the planets. So yeah, I got the when I was little. So that just kind of shows how much I liked it because I was asking for that. And so with my telescope though, I was never actually able to see anything really good. And if we actually got an observatory and I can use this, I can see some pretty cool things out in space. And um, also, I always thought I knew a lot about about uh, space and stuff. And but using this, I could learn so much more. So I'm really excited. I really hope we can do this. Thank you, Kevin. Hey, next we've got Corey Anderson. Corey is a junior this year. Uh, my name is Corey Anderson. I represent the junior class. And I think this is a wonderful new opportunity to spark a new interest in science. That really hasn't been there before, especially in our junior class. It seems that a lot of my classmates don't really enjoy the current style of classroom learning that we have. And I think this will provide a whole new perspective for them. And I, pro I presented this idea of the observatory to a couple of my classmates, and then seem just as excited about it as I am. 
Thank you. The senior class, we've got Noah Brown. Hi guys, I think the Wilton Community School District would just uh, benefit immensely from this. I don't think there would be uh, many drawbacks from it. I think I personally would have benefited throughout my schooling from it in many uh, subjects, not only science, but in math and uh, that. And no longer would we need to watch a video about the sun or look at pictures online of the moon or make up light sequences of stars to analyze in chemistry. Uh, we can study and learn hands-on through this telescope and the observatory and you know these celestial objects up in the sky we can look at real time you know what they're doing as we speak and I think the schools will really reap the benefits from this over the years. Uh, there were three others who were not able to be here tonight but they still wanted to have their voices heard so they sent me a quick paragraph each about what they wanted to say. First was Michaela Bree. Michaela is a sophomore. Uh, she said, I believe this project would greatly benefit our school in many ways. It will broaden our students' understanding of space and, it, and what it contains, as well as create more ways for students to express themselves through photography. I know this will be a great project, and I hope you do too. Uh, Ellie Huguenet is a freshman. She is also one of our ambassadors, and she said, I think getting an observatory for the school would be a really cool thing, and I'm pretty excited about this idea. We'd be able to actually do science and not just sit in the class. I think a lot of students will enjoy this hands-on learning experience, and I can't wait to see what pictures students are able to take with the telescope. When we went and saw the telescope for the first time, we were able to see how a lot of our students would be able to, but also the community would be able to benefit from this project. And then Jane Anderson is an eighth grader, and she said, I think that if we had an observatory at our school, then the kids would have a lot more fun with learning about how the stars and sky works. Most kids get bored with just sitting in classrooms and reading textbooks or listening to their teachers talk about space or the sky. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Honesty is best. <laughs> I also think that the teachers would have some fun with teaching the kids and might also learn something along with them. If we get the chance to build an observatory, we'll, we will be one of, if not the only schools in Iowa to have uh, such a thing on our school grounds. Um, so, one of the reasons I got into teaching was, obviously, you might not be surprised, I think science is really cool, <laughs> very interesting, but also I felt like my career through high school and through college, the classes that I took didn't inspire that, didn't reflect just how interesting science can be. And so I wanted to bring that to my students. That's something that I wanted to do as a teacher. And I think having an, an observatory in this way is every science teacher's dream, <laughs> right? I don't see this as just a small project that we would you know, sprinkle into a few classes here and there. I really see if we're able to do this project that it would be the center of the curriculum that I build for this science, for this district as a high school. And I've talked with the other science teachers and they have tons of ideas about how they would use it as well. Uh, math teachers, even the Spanish teacher said that she's gonna figure out some way to use it. Um, I really feel that not only is this gonna be great for our students that are here, but it's gonna be great for the community too. In so many ways, we're trying to connect more and more with the community. Uh, we've got a STEM skinny. Joe Hewitt and I are going to be teaching a STEM this next semester, and we are looking for ways to connect with the community. And we actually, if this is able to go through, we will incorporate this project into our STEM class as well and have students solve problems in the real world of how this observatory is going to function and how it works. And also having the opportunity to have the community come in and be a part of what the students are learning too. Uh, I think that has a lot of power for bringing the entire community together. Uh, and we can also attract a lot of great new teachers if we have something unique like this. One of the reasons I came here when Ken hired me a couple of years ago was that I saw the community support that the school has. And I saw the unique, the unique opportunities that 
are possible at this district. And I think with this, other teachers will see that too. And we'll be able to bring in other great teachers and maintain great teachers as well. And then lastly, um, we've got a really great team already built up for this observatory. Uh, I'm sure you guys have talked with Grant and seen his enthusiasm for the project. Uh, the stuff that he has done in the past month is just incredible. He is motivated, and I think that's the kind of person that a project like this needs. Uh, you might not be surprised to know that teachers are quite busy. Uh, we work, I stay up until midnight a lot of times just trying to get through what I can do for the students the next day. And that would block a lot of things that I might want to do. But having someone that is able to land the project like Grit has so far, I think is a great tool. And what is really going to push this project to come to fruition. And I hope that we're able to make it happen and we're able to build this community. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, well, the students used all my comments and did it much better, so I'm just going to kind of cut to the, to the nitty gritty. So, um, the piece that I have is um, I just printed off a couple copies of the um, Iowa Core Science Standards, um, that uh, K 12, and just so you could see a few of the standards that would be um, that, that have to do with Earth and space systems. Um, and so, we are teaching it. From, from, a, from kindergarten on up, kindergarten, first grade, third grade, fifth grade specifically, um, and then into junior high and high school. And, um, and I think one of the students said, you know, it's right now we use books and we use video clips and we try to make it as interactive and interesting, but that's the best we can do. And it's cool and you get excited, but to have a student go out and be able to actually look at what we're talking about, look at the Maria's on the moon, or look at the sun, you know, during the day when, when something's going on. I can't even imagine how much more engaged and how much more excited they would be to actually get to see that firsthand. Um, um, and, and I guess the thing that I wanted to address was the usage of it, because I know that was a concern, is how much is it going to be used. And you know, just from that list right there, we have 12 classrooms, 12 different classrooms who are teaching these, and aren't just in the elementary alone, who are teaching Earth and Space Systems concepts. And so even if those 12, are they going to use it on a daily basis? Probably not. Are they going to use it on a weekly basis? Probably not. But if you've got concepts to teach and we have 12 different classrooms that are going to be covering some earth and space systems concept, we're going to be utilizing that. I mean, that would, it would be silly for us to show them a teacher tube video of a nebula where we can go out and look at it. Or we can talk about the sun and solar flares and how they affect our satellites and our cell, their cell phones, which drives them crazy. You know, when we can go out and look at it happening, you know, in real time. So I guess from a usage perspective, um, I think that, that we have enough um, science standards that we cover that, that we can assure you that the, the use will be there. My name is Dave Mortz. I'm her husband, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. So when it comes to fifth and sixth grade science club, I'm the guy cutting the foam and everything else and building cardboard boats and things for the kids. Um, but I'm more the practicality of this project because I work at Stanley Consultants. So I do engineering work every day, okay? So Grant asked me to take a look at what would be needed to make this project come to life. And I come here tonight and I thought, well, everything's great. And I talked to Joe and he goes, hey, we get tons of water down in this area. So all of a sudden, some of the reality of things needs to be looked at. But I'm not discouraged. I don't back down easy. And what this is for is really to get approval to move ahead with trying to secure funds and raise money through a lot of different sources Grant has lined up. And also, I have a lot of connections too. So what we're looking at is um, 
The area, why don't you go and pull up the site PDF first, if you would, and we'll show them where we're going to put this. There's one that says Wilton Site PDF on there. Let's get my... Wilton Site Model? Uh, yeah, try that. There you go. Okay, let me get out of everybody's way from the <laughs> side. One of the things, I, I've been talking with Chris Ball of the city, and uh, also I, I know the codes and that as far as what's required for occupancy, things like that. And one of the things we did today was we, we pulled in the GIS system and put contours on the site. So these are actual contours that you have out there. And this area right here is where we were looking at putting the observatory. Then Joe said just now when I come that the water all the shed from here comes and runs down through here. And this is built up quite a bit, and it floods down in this area. So what we're looking at is, uh, I'm honestly going to have to look at this a little closer and see what we can do for fill, etc. I'm still not discouraged. Uh, I know roughly what some of the people are thinking in here about what you paid for your concessions building, etc., etc., etc. But you have to realize you also took bathrooms in there, and bathrooms are very expensive. Sewer lines, everything else. This facility, we're about 400 feet from the high school, and because of the occupancy of the, the class itself, this room right here would be where the people would sit, which would be climate control. And this little piece right here would be a separate building. I'm going to pull up the PDF, says floor plans once. I drew this up last night watching TV, so it's kind of crude and rough, but it's to scale. Okay. So what this area here is, oh, there, we go. there you go, beautiful. There's your north arrow, okay. And like I said, this area here would be roughly a 30 by 30 building. A code requires 20 square foot per child or per student, and we easily are larger than that. The construction would be um, standard wood, tr wood trusses and, and stick built with a R13 value side walls, all R30 blowing up in the uh, attic space. No windows. The only thing we have is two doors, ADA accessible. Right here we could do two different things. We could do uh, fluorescent tubes with T8 lights. We could do LED. I'll get into that a little bit later. Right here we do a connector sidewalk. That sidewalk would be seven foot long so that we actually isolate the area that holds the telescope in it. This area right here would be concrete pour of a duct bank, if you know what a duct bank is, where you put your conduits in so that you can get your services from one building to another. Okay. So what I drew on here was, oops, the right button to help. That's just a box. We haven't resolve details yet to pull com, fiber, etc. into and then distribute it out through. We would take com over to this side, put another box in. This roof on this building would be a re rolling roof, a retractable roof. I don't, don't worry about this because the ambient temperature in here for the, the uh, telescope has to be one to two degrees different from ambient outdoor temperature. Okay. So that way you don't fog your lenses, you don't uh, get condensation in your scope, etc. So this would be real easy to heat because it only has to be marginal heat to get one degree of delta for, from the outside, temperature difference. Okay. This area over here, we're going to show you a picture. I'm going to cheat and show you my shop out in the backyard. <laughs> but I put in radiant floor heat with a little micro boiler and it heats very efficiently. Because what you do is you heat your concrete slab up, and once that slab's heated, it doesn't cool down very fast. Our, our utility bill hardly went up at all when we started using that. And then this, I have receptacles put around the outside of it. They would be at 18 inches high, and also some at 58 inches high, stacked so that we can have monitors on the walls on three sides. Okay, This would be my micro boiler in the corner here. That'd be gas coming in. Gas would be our propane. We'd have to determine the capacity of the tank out by the maintenance building. 
or we might have to put in another tank. We'll have to look at that. But again, we're at a planning stage, okay? This would be electrical in. I talked to Joe and he got 122 40 volt service to the maintenance building. 200 amp service out there is barely being utilized. This building I anticipate, we're going to be lucky if we pull 40 to 60 amps total for the whole building off that 240 volt panel. So we'd run some inductoring underground from the other building. And then here I got a, a, another duct bank coming in. That'd be for fiber coming in. I talked to, uh, oh, what's the guy's name? Uh, oh. Oh, oh, Uber or Uber or something. Uber, Uber sorry. Okay. Anyway, I talked to him today and he said he wants uh, uh, two four strands of single mode fiber. I'd, fiber cost is cheap. I'd put in 12 strand fiber, very little cost difference per foot. But that way we'll have fiber connectivity and it's already also out at the maintenance building. So we already have power and uh, fiber for connectivity and we have propane and the propane will have to uh, evaluate that. So what happens is, is this is going to be, you guys know what a sauna tube is? Where you pour street lights and you put a concrete casing, this cardboard in the ground and you fill it with concrete. That's what that's going to be right in the middle and that's going to come out of the ground about two feet and then this will be permanently mounted to that concrete. But we want to get this up high enough so the optics on here are about even with the roof height, the, the wall height of eight feet in here. So what we're looking at doing is having, you guys have been to Menards and seen them roll the little two-step rolling stairs that's got the rails on the side, they put the brakes down and they can walk right up and take a look through the eyepiece. Okay? By doing that, what we do is we can take the rolling roof and get it off to the sides and the kids can have full view of all the, the sides except the western sky doesn't have that much to look at anyway compared to the south, the east, and the north. Okay. So again, I drew this up last night, but I also went to Menards and did some costing for this. I built my shop out back, it was 34 by 34, and with me building it, and I had Jake Hoekstra help do the concrete uh, with footing walls. These would have footing walls all the way around them, just like my shop does out back. This one would too. We'd float the slab here for a sidewalk, nothing fancy, right off to the sides that way. But I had about 30,000 in my shop, and that's for a 34, 34, and that's I have friends in the right places, so electrical can be handled, um, pretty much everything. Yeah, I'm not, and I will be in charge and help with the construction of this also. Like I said, I built my house and the shop, so this isn't too tough. This will be the same way. What we're looking at doing here is this will have, like, you got a line coming through here all the way on both sides. That'd be angled channel iron that would be mounted on the top plates, and then we'd put rollers on it. And if you go back into the other presentation, um, it'd be retractable. So we'd have that so you could easily pull it off. And two hours before you go out there and do what you need to do, the, the pounds of force to move it, we'll get that engineered so it's not hard for a teacher to roll it off. <coughs> There's your system right there. There's your channel, a simple angle, and then we'll run a bead, uh, welding bead, of course, with metal coming out the side, and then this is a all thread coming through here with a roller that would match the bevel of the, the 90 degree angle turned upside down. Pretty slick, okay? And again, that's only on the roof of the observatory area itself, and we only gotta do one to two degrees delta in there for temperature, okay? Go back to uh, that one that said Wilton Observatory, the, that one right there, this one right here. Nope, try it again. All right, the side model. There you go, that one, the Word document right there. Oh. That looks like it'll work. So anyway, I come out here yesterday with Di, and my wife, and we took some pictures. And that would be the scene looking to the north. Now one of the things that's going to happen is that, of course, when you're having a football game or softball or baseball, you are not looking to the north. The light glare would be enough to distract for that, so you'd have policies and procedures that say, hey, here's our schedule of events and what's going to be taking place out there, and they have to work around it. That's a no-brainer, okay. Go down a little bit. There's the east. Okay, you went too far. No, go down a little bit. Whoops. 
I guess you're right with the east view. All we are is looking out over the open field. That's one of the best areas to look at as far as astronomy. Go to the next one. That's south view. There's no street lights or anything along here. And really pretty protected when you look at straight south, you're about right in this area here. West view. West view, of course, is there's the propane tank. There's uh, Joe's maintenance building out there. And again, the watershed, like Joe was just saying, comes down in here. So we're going to have to look at some grade issues here. I'm being honest. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we'll see what we can do as far as some fill or whatever. Okay. Go to the next slide. Go down. What I've talked about, no, there you go. Kind of zoom, take your, your down here and zoom it down to about 75%. Go right down here and slide your up. There you go. Perfect. Now down a little bit. Page down a little bit. Okay, here's here's what I propose. What you got here is this is a heating cooling system for the warming room portion as I was talking about. Radiant floor heat, what happens here is you put in a little micro boiler. This is only a four by eight sheet of plywood on the wall in that corner I showed you earlier. Little micro boiler, it's got a gas feed coming to it. In this case, it'd be propane through the roof exhaust, stubs out. And you come down with two little circ pumps on here. And it pumps down, go to the next slide now. There you go. Then you got a manifold system. This is your supply, and if you can imagine, you just go serpentine back and forth with four zones in that area about that big of 250 feet of hex tube each zone. And I could heat that building easily to whatever temperature we want to keep the kids warm to. Okay? I keep my shop at 55, so. So that, anyway, that's PEX tubes down and in, and then PEX tubes return, and it just circulates a glycol loop. Maintenance? I haven't touched mine for three years. I don't do anything to it. It comes on automatically off the thermostat. So, next slide now. And again, with the insulation value, one of the things I want to talk to people about, if we can get to go ahead to search for funding, is I'm going to find people that can spray foam for the sidewalls and give me a better R value. We also have friends there that, uh, you know, I think we can get the material cost only, hopefully. The other thing I'd do is I'd put in time switches. These are microprocessor based time switches. You got 30 minutes, 60 minutes, 2, 4, 8, and 12 hours. All you do is push one of those buttons, you walk away from it, and they time right to the, and they're about 40 bucks a piece. Therefore, anybody that uses it and forgets to turn the lights off, it shuts them off automatically to meet dash rate 90.1. Okay, so I would recommend putting those in. The other thing I wrote up in here about LED lights. I know you built the new school. I think those are all fluorescent lights, even in the new school, aren't they? Did no, you put no. T8s? What do we have in our job? You, get, you got T8 fluorescents in the new edition. Right. One of the things with the LEDs that everybody's going just crazy about right now is I showed uh, strips of 20 footers with two lamps a piece, and when you see the inside of our shop, it puts out a lot of light. We get about 60 foot candles to the surface. If you buy LED right now, at this time, you're still paying too much for them. Prices are going to drop, just like a TV, all right? The other thing with LEDs right now is you buy a strip light like that, and when the LEDs start going bad, they don't give you replacement LEDs. you got to replace the whole fixture. So I would just as soon, for this installation, still utilize the lower-cost T8 fluorescent lamps. The other thing you can do with fluorescent lamps is you can red sleeve one side and, and use the other one as clear. Red sleeve them, then you use it like a night sky. Okay? So anyway, that's just my input to LED, so when you're looking at plans once we get something developed, they're really pretty much developed with cost, other than the screening issue right now. Okay. So go ahead and go down. Whoa. Whoa. Go on. As you can see, our shop's a mess. There's one of my wife's science projects right there. Um, but then again, there's five strips of two-lamp uh, fluorescent and I have them as you can see here I would do the same type of construction on this classroom it's standing seam ceiling with drywall sidewalls uh, pretty much what you're going to get you know it's it, it would go up really fast okay
So again, if you marry a science teacher, there's pink foam, airplanes, uh, generator racks, things like that. <laughs> <laughs> but that's representative. The reason I inserted, I inserted those was to kind of give you a representation of how much space is inside of there in a 30 by 30 classroom. Okay. The only thing different about that is we have 11 foot side walls and you'd be going at 8 foot side walls, 8 or 9 is what I'd recommend. Next, go on down a ways. And there again is your, your uh, topo. And that's roughly where we would set the thing. But we will look at what we can do for, you know, building this up. I also got a picture in there of the rolling roof concept so they can kind of get an idea of what that's going to look like. Go back to that, uh, no. my, my zip drive. Does anybody have any questions while he's pulling that up? Bounce them off me. So, why that particular location as opposed to somewhere closer to the building? Services already? are available. Okay. Services, to, to bury in services, like when you guys did your concession building and, and move things around, you found out really fast prices climbed considerably. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With your baseball field, you probably took 480 volt service out there, Joe, did you? 480 volt? Because of your lighting poles. Mm -hmm. You probably took 480 volt three phase out there. A lot of money. Mm -hmm. You also took sewer, bathrooms, etc. One of the beauties about this location, even if we have to grade, we still don't have to take the services out there. Okay? They can go to the bathroom. So whoever is doing the supervision, this will not be that we open the thing up and let anybody go in there and, and have their way with it. Uh, Bo said today that we might want to look at putting uh, access control on the doors just like you have here. So it'd have to be a staff member that goes out there. I do our uh, access control at Stanley's every day, so I'm familiar with what would need to be done. You put a node out there connected to the fiber, and uh, whether we do mag locks or what we do or strikes, I talked to Bo, I'm not a big strike fan, but whatever you guys want to do. So. Okay, so, but why so far from the rest of the campus? Lights. Okay, I just... Lights, glare, night sky. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, if you go outside right now, you're going to see glare bombs on the outside of this school all over. Yeah. And okay. I do not like glare bombs. If, uh, everything I do is indirect lighting or I got cutoff fixtures that light straight down. There's nothing above the angle of the fixture. That's what kills us. Well, they always and another thing that I'd like to say about its location away, and obviously Dave speaks from a, a, a position of authority with, with regard to engineering, but from uh, with regard to the, the astronomy aspect, what you're looking at is the thermal loading of the building itself. So during the day it absorbs that, it absorbs that energy, and at night it dissipates it. So with uh, an increased distance from this large of a thermal mass, you actually increase the uh, quality of the data that the students would be able to gather. So when we go into actually with the older grades joining in to uh, collective um, scientific studies on a national and global level where we share what we find here with the global scientific community and these students will be able to participate in those discussions, the quality of the data that we provide will be greatly increased. So it's just, it's, it's, the best, it's the best situation that we could manufacture here at the Wilton Community School on site. Because they always want, when they do viewings, to be out in the country, as opposed to the city, because you don't have, you want a dark sky, you don't want all the lights, you always want to look for things going it. on. So I understand that. Yeah. I didn't know the thermal side of it. I didn't know that either. <laughs> I just know out in the country you see things so much better than you yeah. do in town yeah. with all the lights. This cost for the viewing room, right, is yeah. the $30. Yeah, let me, let, me, uh, let me speak just from what I, I know from going to Menards and pricing okay. some stuff out. Okay. okay. To go from a 28 to a 28 by 28 building to a 30 by 30 was only $700 of difference okay. in, in construction costs. To me, that's nothing. And, and also, if you guys know, I, I think my wife approached, was this the group about that outdoor classroom I'm also getting involved in? Um, <laughs> the Townsend's funded that. The Townsend's okay. funded that. Okay. okay. Well, we're going to build an outdoor classroom out here. Okay. And Jake Hoekstra is a good friend, too. And Jake has already said, hey, this looks cool. So we're looking at a hexagon style of outdoor classroom. 
concrete bottom with half walls coming up and mm -hmm. it'll be nice. Jake's also going to be helping with this. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to construction cost, I also talked to Tom Hahn, mm -hmm. who used to run Hahn Ready Mix, mm -hmm. who also is the father of who Brandon, I think, that now runs Hahn Ready Mix. He said, I'll put the good word in for it. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping that we can get, again, we're looking at fundraising the approval to go ahead and start a fundraising effort. That guy back there's got so many videos and connections that it's incredible what he's put together. So if the money comes in, that's what we would do to see what shortfalls we have or whatever to keep working with the project to get it together. Mm -hmm. So that was the viewing room. What's the observatory? The little observatory, cost. That, that cost from Menards, again, I'm only material cost from the block up, okay. would be about $3,000. Really? Yeah. Now that's, when I'm giving you these costs, when I said that 28 by 28, mm -hmm. construction cost on that, that's not including light fixtures or electrical, okay, or okay. the boiler system, but just wood uh, sheathing, yeah, the, okay. is about $8,000. I got the quotes right over here. I'm more than happy to talk to any of you if you want to look at it. And so what, what happens is your concrete work, when I did the 34 by 34, was about $10,000. Okay, that little that little uh, twelve by fourteen is the size of that observatory room. It's not big. It's it's not big at all. It doesn't all. have to be because it's just and housing. It's okay. housing the telescope, right. and I don't want too much roof weight to have to roll off. Mm -hmm. The larger I make that room for no reason, I have to weight that down. Mm -hmm. So it, and yeah. the heating of it or cooling of and it. And the heating, again, I have one to two de right. degrees of delta T on that by separating the room. Mm -hmm. One of the things I told Grant, we were looking at making one continual building and walking through a door and going into the next room. Well, thermal losses from that wall that segregated the two rooms when one of them has to be at comfortable 70 degrees or Correct. 65 to go to one that might only be at zero. Mm -hmm. It would be really hard for me to regulate the delta between the two of them. And that's why I said, let's just put this little building out there. You don't need any more than that. Put a sidewalk between them. All of a sudden, I'm able to segregate this for heat losses off the walls, etc. And if we spray wall this and do R30 or, or higher up above, you know, that'll be pretty nice. And that'll have the little micro boiler here, and we'll put the panel in here. So all I'm looking at here is just a... I'm either going to take a loop off of that boiler and concrete encase it and come over here with, with insulation around it so it doesn't heat the concrete joint right here and just do a small loop in there with a separate uh, control on that one. We have to look at that still. Or we'll just put in a small electric heater because it won't take a lot to change one to two degrees delta in a 12 by 14 space. I promised my student families that they'd be done by 6.30, so I'm going to go oh. ahead and give them the option of, of taking mm -hmm. off. Mm -hmm. So, student ambassadors, thank you so much for your input and yes. your enthusiasm and your energy. We very much appreciate it. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. Good job. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. You know what's funny? Hey, stay chatting. Okay. What's thank funny you. is that a lot of these kids as they're walking off were science club kids. Mm -hmm. Jeez. One thing that I'd like to share with all of you right now is he was talking about contacts that I've cultivated. I'm going to be a little humble on that. I've done a little bit of work. Um, I just received a message at 5.37 p.m. from Lunt Solar Systems. Now, Lunt Solar Systems is the uh, chosen provider for the solar telescope that will mount <laughs> right here. So this... This spotter scope is going to go, and we're going to mount a solar telescope in its place. And right here, this is the manufacturer. I just got a message from the manufacturer. It says, hi, Grant. Keeping my fingers crossed that your approval comes through today. Please let me know if and when I may share this great video on our page. Have a great week. Now, this person has zero owed to me. This person is one of countless many that exist out there who I simply shared a simple idea with and they've come through and said, yes, this is great. We're not in a position to sponsor you. We're not in a position to give you anything for free, but we'll help you with your public relations. We'll help you get the word out. And 
that is just one tiny little bit. Then we have another supplier, Attic. Attic is a camera producer, and they produce uh, really amazing, amazing gear. And one of the cameras and one of the modules is an Attic Infinity. I reached out to Attic and I said, hey, basically, because hey, I'm using your pictures in our promotional video, uh, I would like you to put your eyes on it first and make sure you're okay with it. And uh, I don't, you know, I don't want to get in trouble. Attic reached back, reached out to me and said, we love your project. This is awesome. Absolutely. Let us know when you get approval, we'll do PR with you. So it's just a small subsection. When we talk about fundraising, and it's going to be absolutely integral, but it's going to be important that we have that community feel, that we have the community backing, that we build a sense of place and purpose for this observatory here at the Wilton Community School. But beyond the Wilton community, there will be people who will come out of the woodworks to be a part of this. I guarantee you, if I get on right now, on this phone right now, we have an entire PR campaign ready to go. We have all social media, I have 640 email contacts with press release ready to roll. We have got, it is about lunchtime in Cambridge, University of Cambridge, and um, they happen to be on our contacts list. Uh, Professor Stephen Hawking, some of you may know, I have his email address, so he will know of this project. There will be people across the globe that will know of this project. University of Texas, Austin, Harvard, Princeton, Cambridge, as we've said, Cornell, component manufacturers, press people, people in the press. It's going to be important that we engage them, that we engage all aspects of press. We have a press release and a press release list that spans everywhere from Iowa, the Wilt Duran Advocate, all the way to ABC News, CBS, every single major daytime and nighttime and afternoon and Sunday show and print publication across the globe. And that is what's ready to roll. How many people will care? I can't answer that question. How many people will come forward and present us with funds to help see this project to fruition? I cannot answer that question. But I can, answer the, I can say with a high level of certainty that the funding that we have forecasted is well within our reach. And the level of support that we will receive, I believe, will be astounding. Because we're not simply looking here. We're not simply hoping to have contacts. We have contacts. We're not simply hoping to have a press campaign. We have one ready to go. We don't simply hope to maybe some of these uh, component manufacturers might step up and give us a hand. We have people ready right now to go. I give them the green light. They're gone. I just want to interrupt a second. Um, Again, he's got a lot more energy than I do. Go on, go But anyway, I'm kind of the, the practicality and the common sense, so if you've got any questions for me, I'm more than happy to answer anything. The other thing is is that this, again, I want to emphasize is a just a request to go ahead and start seeing what we can do for funding. Anything that's developed on my behalf to go in this direction, I'd run it by everybody. Joe, you know, everybody to make sure that cost-wise we're in line and, and we can do what we want to do. My question is, yeah. how much outside funding can we get? I don't like to always tax our community by, I mean, I think we're looking when, at all outside funding for this right. project. Okay. My, my that, goal with coming to you tonight. Other than like Jake, you know, I'm um, so no, he's I, volunteering saying, his I'm services, you're volunteering your We've been your, talking. And Service. that's what I'm looking at tonight is a green light to go and see what we can get for outside funding to okay. do the entire project. So the, my intent and the intent that of, of our entire committee is that this project be supported through fundraising and outside funding. Now the fundraising aspect, all of our promotional videos are tagged with a PayPal link. That PayPal <laughs> link is fully traceable so that every, every cent that is accrued through this campaign is traceable and it is linked and it's transferable. So for audit and treasury purposes, we'll know not only when and where, but who. So we have that, that is ready to go. So every time a person clicks, every time a person views, they will also have a means to donate. And that's obviously very important in a fundraising campaign. Uh, so that 
that aspect is covered. Um, and then obviously, free of charge to the uh, school district, my wife Katrina and I will be donating this instrument at no cost to the school. I've got a question. Uh, Will they actually look through the telescope? I mean, you've got three walls yes. of monitors. So yes. they're going to look at monitors, like a computer screen, or are they going to actually look through the telescope itself? So when it, comes to the level, when it comes to the level of engagement, we're going to scale level of engagement based on age. So the younger grade levels might be a little bit more separated from the telescope, and that's simply just a matter of hands-on. They have a tendency to touch. I have young boys, I know. And uh, so, yes. They want to touch, oh, I, I love it. And they can touch this, and they can touch that, and that's fine. But you start touching some stuff up here, not so good. So <laughs> you want to avoid that. So in the design of the modular concept, that is something that we have covered. Because when we have the younger grades in there, and they might not be late night owls, so we're probably going to be doing a good bit of solar in the younger, for the younger grades, they're going to be able to view that on the monitors. So we're gonna, they're going to be able to control, they can move the telescope around, it's easy, it's point and click, I have the program that's up right back there. It's point and click, everything is super, super easy. They can move it around, they can see the feed. Now once we get to the older, the older grades, that aspect of visual astronomy, we have a module that's included into the plan, and that module, for me, from a personal standpoint, I don't say this as, as a member of a committee or a group or anything, for me, Visual astronomy is the simplest and it's the most profound aspect of astronomy, is that photons have traveled for millions of years that have created distant bodies that may have already become extinct. They may have already exploded. They're dead. They're gone. Those photons have traveled all of these trillions of miles to terminate in my eye, to give me a picture of what that was. It's a profound sense of place. It's a profound sense of scale to actually be able to witness the profundity of the sky above. Okay. So I visual I'm going to pull you in just a little <laughs> bit because I know you have yeah. <laughs> many constraints. Okay. And so I got a question. Yeah. Um, I, got, I got another one too. So. Well, <laughs> I, 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 okay. So Joe, I mean this question for you, but don't we have to have an architect look at all this stuff? Let let me throw some questions out there that I may answer for you guys. Okay. This is, I, I think it's a great idea, but let me play the devil's advocate here, mm -hmm. because you guys are all looking at this all great and everything, which is great. I think it would be wonderful for the kids and everything, but you've got to look at, I look at what it costs, what all these different things. So some of the things I've come up with, bathrooms. Do we have to have bathrooms? No, we don't have to have bathrooms. I checked with Stanley Architects today. Okay, what if they need a bathroom? Then they'll have to have access to go to the high school to utilize okay, How do they get in and out of there? Somebody will have to be a staff member that has a, a pass to get in or is during school hours. Okay. Is it ADA compliant? ADA compliant, yes. The doors are going to be 36 inch okay, doors. Okay, you want to look through that telescope. Can a handicapped person get up yes, there and Yes, ADA compliance, that? there's a system called the ARE-125. The ARE-125 is an extended uh, viewing eyepiece. The ARE-125 meets ADA compliance. Okay. Um, and then you're going to have to have the fire marshal sign on okay. this. Parking, where are you going to park out here? As far as parking goes, that's one of the things that we really haven't looked at yet because we don't know what interest there will be for outside people, and that's something that I'm not going to be involved in. All I'm going to do is help get this built. But parking, I know where you're going, Dad, here, because you don't want people parking probably on the gravel there. Well, I'm looking at that. Okay, you got parking, then if you don't have, you got to park out there. How do you get a sidewalk back there? You got to have something. Who cut shovels at all the time? Who makes sure that who's paying for just? I'm not trying to. Joe. Be, I'm just throwing. There's a lot of things. You, that. you guys are you're throwing it out as a great thing, which it is. It is. Yeah. But I also have to look at all these things that are going to affect me. Your rolling roof. Yeah. When that's full of snow, how does that roll? How yeah. do you get that snow off of that roof? Yeah, it just have to be snow melt. You know. Okay, so it's so real heavy there. and you can't use it because yeah. it's full of snow. There's We're just throwing some of these. So yeah. that we're no, no. Um, let, let me address them. Number one is one of the questions I had yesterday was as far as the sidewalk goes. Um, I don't know as far as the track itself. Can people walk on the track? Is there any 
taboo about walking on the track surface or then extending a sidewalk from there that would bring you out to this? Well, they can walk on the track except in the winter when it's full of snow. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, they can walk on it then, too. That doesn't affect them. You need the yeah. question, too. You know, someone that's wheelchair bound. Right. You right. Know, how would they right. get to so That's where you the bring in the AEA, to too. That's yeah. the, I think the bigger. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, uh, and, and again, what we're looking at here, you know, for Joe and, and for the whole board and everything is, is that we'll have to look at the grading issues and a lot of this stuff. You know, we're trying to get an approval to get the funding. And so if, if the funding comes in and we got extra funds in that, he's got all the energy. Man, I don't, you know. But if it comes to fruition where he's got the money to build this, then we'll start looking and I have no problem. Stanley's, they're the ones that put together that topo map for me today. And until you said something about all those shed goes this way, I just got pulled into this not too long. Right, no, I understand. So if you got a water issue there, we're gonna look at grading. We're gonna look at all this, but that's down the road after we get approval to seek funding and get this out there. To I guess. <clears throat> Some of the other things yet I'm not done. Yeah, no, it's <laughs> not can, I, can I just How say something? How many people are gonna be in this? Well, we're looking at a group. Yeah, we're looking at a normal groups of 15 or so, but the thing is set up so we got 20 square foot per student, so you could get 35. In there. Okay. Then you get started in. Okay, if you talk to the fire marshal, does this have to be a sprinkled building? Because no. you're going to have. I talked to the architects about it. Right. So the fire marshal would approve this yes. without sprinkling. Yes. Okay. Because of the combustion. Now the you will have to have a fire alarm that would go all the way out there and connect to the building. Uh, I you, don't believe you would have to because you would have kids in there. It would have to be. Okay. I guarantee you, you would have to. Do you have a fire alarm system that's networked here in the school? Like it's in this building, when you have something? to get wiring. Oh, I'm just, okay. Like yeah. I say, I'm not trying to squash this. I'm trying to just realize that there and, are other and what things he's saying by this. What he's saying by the fire alarm systems, I designed fire alarm systems at Stanley Stew. So what we would do is we would, fire suppression systems. We, would take a, we would take a fiber out and put a media converter in off of your 4100 if you're simplex. I don't know what you are, simplex. Are you simplex here? No. No fire, use. Edwards. I, I, well, it was simplex once upon a time. Yeah. I don't know. It's okay. Notifier. Notifier. Yeah, okay. it's a notifier. Yeah, it's a notifier system. So it might be an onyx. So anyway, it's it's changing a media converter to fiber and pulling an extra strand of fiber. That's why I said earlier about taking twelve strands. Mm -hmm. You got. Uh, we'd have to get a, a circuit back in here with fiber. Yeah, I'm just throwing these things out. That yeah. these are things that will have to be done. Like hours, when would this be open? Well, that'd be during normal school days, or that's something that's going to have to be discussed. As far as, because at night, it's kind of like the access control thing. You don't want to give a key out to somebody, because Bo had a good point. But give a key to somebody, they're going to go out and make keys, and then all of a sudden things are gone. So it almost have to be a staff member that's going to have to be manned with any group that comes into there. Okay. Well, so you'd have different, like at night, because that's one of the things you, for the kids, for them, they'd have to come up at night, so that they have to be a specialized well, the, class. The, right, and that, that, the, the, the highest level of engagement with the night sky is going to occur in the fall and the winter months. So in the fall and the winter months, obviously, we have a greater amount of night. Night comes earlier. One of the reasons we've given so much focus to having eastern, southern, and northern exposure, and we've basically neglected our western exposure, is essentially to maximize the usable space of the sky. So that when we have the kids that come out in the fall and the winter, in those early evening hours, as darkness progress, progresses east to west, we can engage in targets at the east and north and south. And obviously the south with the richest fields that we have. So that is, again, that's an aspect of curriculum development that's going to be taken on by um, the teachers, Mr. Meyer, and all of them as well, that aspect of curriculum development and scheduling. So, and then... As far as access control, that's going to fall in line with whatever the school policy is. But then again, uh, we will be able to, with advanced scheduling, I live a half mile away from here. If you don't fully believe, I'll loving, I will gladly shake your hand and assure you that I have all of the interest in the world that this operates and that this comes to fruition. And I live a half mile away, and if you call me and there needs to be access, uh, like I, I jokingly made the point, my wife has keys to City Hall, we're, we're okay, we can access this. We're, we're, we're good with the school, so um, at any rate, 
we're here. Tara, I'm sorry, Tara. Tara. I, I need to excuse myself here in a few minutes. My daughter's in the play. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, but I guess okay. what I wanted to say was why your project and not someone else's is, and I'm not asking that as a question to you. I'm asking that for us. I mean, I think there's so many unknowns, and I think it's our job to have answers to all that, my personal opinion anyways, before we give a green light on fundraising, because I would hate us to actually really get into this and some of the some of the things not work out and then all for none. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I um, but back to why your project and not someone else's. I think we really need to sit back and think about that. Um, so you come to us with this and don't get me wrong, it's amazing, it's great. I think it's super cool. I would love to I would love to look at it myself. But say the trap club comes and they want a gun range because that's their passion and you know there's there's so many things we need to decide moving forward i think what we say yes and what we say no to um so at this point i personally don't feel comfortable giving that green light um again i just wanted to say that quick before i took off because <laughs> whatever happens after i leave um i think your presentation is amazing i think it's great that the kids are excited about it i have five kids and anything that stimulates Learning is amazing, um, but that I'm just at that point right now. So. I'm also kind of hearing you say, which I want to say, we have been known to go slow. We have been known to, we have all our ducks in a row. We, we, it, for this building project, it took us years. You know, we need to have all the facts. I would like to know all these things, what Joe has said. How is the part? I like to have it all in a row, all, to know all the costs everything up front before we even obviously even try to have a fundraiser. I don't I want to be ready with what we're going to have and present before we even ask for any money because I think they should know what exactly it is, how it's going to work, all these questions that Joe has that we have need to have some answers I think before we could really say yes. I'm I'm yeah, kind of building it. To, to me, it's, it'd be an obvious yes thing to do. There's so many yes. great things that can come with this. It's the logistics, and, and you got a lot of those squared away, obviously, already. Yes. But it's, yeah, it's making sure that all the questions are answered as best we can going into it. I don't know how you can have an accurate cost target at this point until we deal with everything that you know, Joe was just talking about as well. I mean, what would be your, your funding benchmark that you're even after at this point? The funding benchmark that we're after right now, I mean, we have figured, uh, I have an instrumentation cost, which has been my uh, my focus, my instrumentation cost runs at around $24,000. Right. Um, the $24,000 instrumentation cost covers the modular approach. The modular approach obviously increases sure. the, uh, the, the, the the class time. So it increases, it, it decreases is, the setup I'm time. I'm going to interrupt this. So when you send this, when you set your fundraising goal, what is that big number? What, what's the number that you need to hit? The big number would be a compilation of Dave's figures and mine. So we're looking at yeah, with 75. Hey, well, I, I hate, I agree with what you're saying right now because of what developed tonight with uh, this. Joe? War sharing. No, no, it's not. Well, it's and it's right. true. This, this is true. I didn't know right. that. Like I, I said, I, I'm coming to the table <clears throat> and trying to bring reality with it. And, and so, Correct. you know, as far as uh, if, if uh, he went out and tried to secure funding, okay, you guys are the ones that got to like, allow him to do it. But if, if we want to wait until I can work with Stanley's a little more to secure in another month, roughly what we're going to have for grading changes and also talk to some help and mm -hmm. see what I can get donated. Mm -hmm. I would I mean, think we should see some kind of a budget. Mm -hmm. yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, and <laughs> don't we have to have an architect look at Well, what we have to do is get our school attorney involved because anytime there's, for lack of a better word, a volunteer project. Yeah. A group of volunteers came in, like when we built the wrestling room a number of years ago, you have to get a school approved architect, which mm -hmm. would be fine, you know, <laughs> yeah. want to donate, right. but yes. then you answer all the ADA compliance issues mm -hmm. and you meet the school codes and, you know, there's certain things that have to be met from the electrical side and whatnot, that's your world, you mm -hmm. understand that, mm -hmm. but we have to make sure we're signed off and everything is legit legal for any structure to be put up. And mm -hmm. as, as frustrating as it is, putting something on your own property, as you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
is apples and basketballs in terms of what's required. Mm -hmm. You know, and School. sadly, as a public entity, when you're building something, <laughs> it causes three times or more we, of what you would do. I, mean, I just go build back to, to you know, we wanted to do a new concession stand here, forty thousand dollars. All of a sudden, it became one hundred twenty thousand dollars because things we had yes, to do. Mm -hmm. Man, it was a new structure, mm -hmm. and I don't want to go through that again. And I, I don't want you guys to go out and do fundraising. And oh, by the way, we're, not. we're off by hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars. I mean, that's not a win for anybody. So, I'm excited too. I'm the guy that drove eight hours to take pictures of the sun for two minutes this summer. Okay, mm -hmm. so I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> well, I, I, but, don't, I don't have any issues but, at all securing but, more pricing. Mm -hmm. But you know, and like Joe brings up the points, and yeah. until I talked with Joe, and like tonight, that was some of the items I didn't know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I speak Joe's language because I know his systems, and I know from what I do what he's looking at. And so, you know, I can pull all the code documents out and say, okay, here's why we don't need this, we don't need this, we don't need this, and that's your background to mm -hmm. go to your attorney and start going from there. And, and to close this out, I think that right now that's where you're going, and, and I understand. Mm -hmm. So I'd say, you know, would you let us come back in a month or so and have some more costing in line and to... to uh, you know, and it, it's frustrating because you know I was also involved in that the building across the street, you know, which I, I thought was a no-brainer. Took 15 years, folks. Yeah. Between fundraising and, and iterations. The benefit of this is the scale. Right. Yeah. Uh, no. I, I was right. at the same scale, but I'm just but that's just an illustration. But it still goes through it, the same it steps. Still goes through the same steps, and and you know, um, if we do this, we want it to happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. So. Um, so I'm excited, but I want to make sure we go about the right way so that it happens if, See, if we're going to decide. One of the things happen. I like about this style of a design is maintenance-wise for you, Joe. There's a little boiler, there's nothing to it. The only AC we got, we're going to put a little built-in one in the sidewall, you know, to cool that space because the other one doesn't hardly need anything. So maintenance-wise, but Joe brings up good points. Who's going to clean the sidewalk off? Who's going? You know, so what we're going to do, I'm going to say what I'll do, is I'll go back to Stanley's and we'll, we'll lay this in here. And I wish we had some images as far as how much watershed, you know, as far as I got one good thing for you as far as the sidewalk, as far as putting dirt in there, we have a huge pile. <laughs> 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 that's, that's good. We'd like to get rid of it. Because yeah. there is a risk here, and it's, the job doesn't get done right. Yes. And either it takes too long or it's too expensive or it's done in a way that isn't user friendly and, and doesn't accomplish the goals of the project. So but that's kind of why we're, at least for me, I mean, why there's always that hesitation with the logistics and making sure every I is dotted and T crossed before we that go ask you for money for it. I only had one other quick one I'm throwing in there, mm -hmm. which this could be years. What happens if that farm field becomes houses? That farm field becomes houses. Null and void, right? Well, no, because we use we will be utilizing narrow band uh, narrow band filtration. So what will be what will be utilized is um, a Finger Lakes Finger Lakes Instruments manufactured for utilizing a, uh, a company called Botter Planetarium. Um, we are using uh, narrow band pass filtration, so we'll have the ability to look at the sky unfiltered and unaided. But when we want to take out very specific wavelengths and build these complex pictures like you see behind mm -hmm. you, um, we're going to be utilizing narrow band pass filtration. So the utilization of narrow band pass filtration uh, totally takes care of that light pollution issue. Now obviously the less light pollution, the better. Mm -hmm. However, when it comes to that sort of infiltration of you know, the, that encroachment of the light pollution, uh, we will not be robbed fully of the asset. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mentioned earlier, and this is just from a curious mind, that um, most of the viewing, the best viewing is later in the day, the night sky. But during the school day, when kids would have access to it, it would be more sun-based, where you're looking Correct. at the sun? Correct. We'll have a lot of, we're going to have, we have a lot of, there would be a large solar component. And so the solar component will be uh, taken care of with uh, an H-alpha, it's a specially tuned H-alpha telescope that will mount to this. Um, the computer program back here has the ability to track the sun. It's 
pretty simple. Uh, so we're going to be uh, tracking the sun, and they will be able to engage in that and in, in whatever current event that is occurring with it on a solar, on a solar scale. But when it comes to engaging in the night sky, that night sky, that sort of curriculum, that sort of engagement is going to be, I, I would feel, um, probably that after school program. Now, that would be an aspect of curriculum mm -hmm. development that would take care of later. But that aspect of curriculum development would be uh, utilizing it as, you know, as darkness, as it gets dark sooner, so, for the fall and that winter months, so. How would you see that develop? I mean, you gotta have a staff member here, you gotta have Ms. Morris here, or, or somebody to go out there with kids at night. I mean, would that be a science yeah, club? A special science contract? Club. I mean, you're gonna have to, I mean, Conversation wise, or how, I mean, how do you have yeah, to have a space club? Yeah. It would be club. So one right now, she does science club. Mm -hmm. okay. But, it, but it'd be high school, it'd be elder. Right. I mean, high school, too. Yeah. Yeah. I just wonder, they'll all use it. So, well, they have to commit. I mean, a lot right. of commit commitment to doing it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. after hours. If Saturday. you're a good teacher, you commit. Yeah. 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 Plain and simple. I mean, right. you got yeah. commitment right here. and Absolutely. I know she's committed. So. Oh, right. I know. Yeah, and you're the <laughs> I have no choice. <laughs> oh, you like it too. Are there like partnerships you with like Muscatine Community College? Or maybe you reach out to Kirkland? Well, we Scott have not. I have not reached out at this point. Sure. Um, simply because we don't have the. I mean, I when, when setting up the promotional videos, I wanted to uh, make sure that the picture licensing, that the audio licensing, sure. all that was taken care of, and I was using specific component manufacturer pictures, so I wanted to make sure that. But uh, as far as I mean, we have contacts, and, and Rick Rick Beckley can speak to this. Is the contacts that he has with the University of Iowa sure. now? Okay. University just thinking in terms of kind of the programming piece right. and offering additional opportunities because mm -hmm. I've got great teachers, but. Right. If there's others who would also be interested in, in able well, to run the then that's as even better. Mr. Even Burnett it's... may expand his 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 reach next door, right? I believe that oh. was in mm -hmm. possibly. Yes. Possibly. Okay. So now now we have well once this once this is developed, you're going to have all the other school districts that see value in it that are going to want to come out. And they're probably going to want to come out as the weekend groups. They're probably going to want to come out as the after you know the, the nighttime, nighttime groups to get the maximum yeah. usage out of that. So you will have that outreach occur. I don't believe that's something that you're going to have to strive for. Uh, I think that's just something you're going to have to put in the paper and then have fun answering your phone. I believe, and I truly do, I truly believe that. And, uh, I, yeah. There are and your contacts, and this has been really beneficial for us. When any time we try to institute anything, we go out and visit other schools and talk to people that have done this. And, you know, really. Really is a benefit. There has to be other high schools, I would imagine. That there's very few K through 12 entities that actually utilize an observatory. Uh, there's. And uh, why is that? That would be. Um, I, I honestly don't know. Perhaps it's a myopic standpoint. It's an issue of sticking with the status quo. It's an issue of sticking with what, what is normally done, what is most easily implemented, perhaps. But I can't speak to that. And money available. No, I mean, money no, available. Curious, I can't. No, I mean, I, I truly, and I know it's all meant, and I don't mean that in any way, but I truly don't know, because I come at it from this standpoint. So I come at it from, I'm engaged in this in a way that it affects me, that it is this wonderful and beautiful thing, and mm -hmm. I see how it affects my children. Mm -hmm. And how, why other people don't do it, I'm not 100%. Now there are, very few. But there are, and they're very nice facilities. They're very, there's like one that has like a Greco-Roman exterior. Right, I, they spent a lot on their exterior. I don't know what their thermal loading is. I wouldn't want to, I, I think it's a little excessive. But uh, it's, a, I believe it's an excellent opportunity. And I think that we're, with this project, we're engaging them in a more advanced way at a younger age. And I don't see that there is any inherent negative in that approach. So to engage them at a younger age in a more advanced field, I've seen it with my own children. There is no inherent negative in that approach. And with enthusiastic teachers who are willing to adopt it and willing to integrate it, and that's one thing that I brought up from the get-go, was that this project can't be me. There has to be an aspect of organic growth. There has to be, and from the second the words left my mouth, People started chiming in. People started piping up. This is awesome. We can do this. We, I, I, can, I can use it for this. I can use it for that. I talked about spectroscopy. And I mean, we're going to actually be able to assess with this telescope and the spectroscopy module and the uh, instrument through Shellyak, uh, 
uh, Shellyak instruments, uh, ALPI 600, we're going to be able to assess the composition, the chemical composition of cosmic bodies in real time. So when it comes to a chemistry class or a physics class, and you want to measure the temperature of things, I mean, the depth to which the teachers will be able to go is quite nearly endless. It's as expensive, it's as large as, as the universe is. And it is as interesting as the universe is. And the capabilities of this telescope truly do open up those doors. I think so. what I'd like to do, so you can finish the meeting, <laughs> is, <laughs> and nothing is Grant. He no. just is very no, he's uh, enthusiastic. No, right. and, and, no, and, and, that's fine. That part's but great. What it's I'd like to do from the board reality part. and from Joe is get a list of questions. Uh -huh. Okay? Give them to Joe and send them to my wife, and I'll take them all. I'll take any question you got, and I'm going to start to secure better funding. And Joe, you tell me exactly your yeah, concerns. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, I don't have any problem with anything Joe said so far. The only one that scares me a little more is just how much grading we would have to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'd like to talk to some people about moving some of that dirt and mm -hmm. how we can get that mm -hmm. down there. So, I, got one, I got one other yeah. I got one question. <laughs> <laughs> What's the life expectancy of that instrument? The life expectancy of the instrument truly is how how good you take care of it. You clean the, you have your main corrector plate here. I'll go ahead and shut her off and switch her into manual, so to speak. So come over here. So you have your you have your corrector plate here. So your corrector plate is this front part, and mm -hmm. you have your primary mirror, which is in the rear. So your primary mirror is isolated. Uh, by and large, isolated from the outside environment. Um, the life expectancy on that is, I mean, you're greater, you're at greater than a decade. My telescope, I have an eight inch, my other telescope, I should say, this is mine, but my other telescope is an eight inch telescope and it's about a 12 year, it's about a 12 year old telescope at this point. And uh, it's had, I've had no maintenance costs with it. Okay. And uh, that's an LX200, so it's a little bit more rudimentary, um, but the overall design and the robust nature of the LX600 line by Mead is uh, such that they've really done quite quite a wonder when it comes to the engineering. So very little, very little. You maintain the corrector plate, keep it clean. That's just by blown air, uh, not canned air, by no canned air, but puffs of air, and you're good. And uh, there's some wear and tear that could occur just from simple usage. You're probably going to tear a data cable at some point. And those are cheap, but. Um, Right. Okay. Just life expectancy. Life expectancy is. It's it's hard. Anything. It's really okay. because so, okay. I mean, uh, for instance, I'll tell I'll tell you this. Uh, so the, uh, the Kepler, uh, it's the observatory that's out by uh, Palisades. Palisades. Mm -hmm. So that that observatory, they have a 24 inch. And that's like a 1972, 1971 mm -hmm. telescope. And they did uh, a resurface on it, which probably came in at a quarter of the cost of the original telescope. And uh, they're back at it. So, I mean, these are, these are very well engineered pieces of equipment. So, well, okay. and this wasn't intended to be your average home user's no. Tool. This was used. This was developed to be an institutional tool. Correct. 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 Right. This is. A, I mean, it's a research. It's a research grade tool. I bought it because I had intents. I had intents in, to use it for NEO detection and spectroscopy. So I wanted to do NEO detection and spectroscopy with a huge element of that community engagement, with reaching out to the community, with doing groups. I think one of the first times when I went to White Pigeon Insurance and I talked about the insurance policy and uh, he's like, you want to insure on what? <laughs> and I talked with him and I said, you, gotta have, you guys got to have a Boy Scout troop around here, right? And I was new, it's the four bins in Boy Scout, or Cub Scouts. And uh, I said, that would be excellent. So I was already thinking about ways to reach out. Now, the issue was, is the stability. So I was not able to achieve the mount stability with a tripod that was necessary for those more advanced applications. Mm -hmm. And um, it was at a point where I was like, you know, I could liquidate this asset and cut my losses and, 
And I, I become kind of down on it. My wife had spoke to me. My wife's like, you had all these great ideas. You had all this passion. You have all this knowledge. You spend days and weeks out there freezing your toes off, taking amazing photographs and doing this stuff, and you have all these desires. Why not just find a different way to do it? Oh, OK. Well, then where would you go? Oh, the school. <laughs> so it was a no-brainer at that point. Here. Mm -hmm. OK. okay. Well, is it just possible in the interim? Gary, oh, did you I have another just question? one more question. Yes, yeah, so I'm a science it. teacher, mm -hmm. and I know the science club will use it at night for the stars. And how much will you use it during the day? How will that fit in the science program if you're just really basically looking at the sun? I mean, that's so, really. It's not just the uh, looking at the sun, but we can also get the data at night and then have the students work with the data during the day. So when they're in the classroom, they're actually working through what we gathered before. Um, so it doesn't, they don't have to be in front of the telescope necessarily, but we're getting our own data and analyzing what they want to find to further, instead of using paper stars, you know, we can actually... <laughs> but well, still definitely cool. How much application do you have during the day, you know, yeah. you know when school is? Well, to, to kind of go a little further with what you're saying is, is this instrument has the capability to be utilized at night and record Right. Record. See but what I'm saying? Right. To process oh. the next day is what he's trying to say. Mm -hmm. right? That's why I wanted so you know, to narrow focus we, we, for we can, today. I, th there can be, uh, you can actually program, uh, program videography and uh, photography sequences. And with these program sequences, you can, it'll actually go through in an automated process and it will record the data from any target that you want. And it's one of the programs that uh, will be utilized in this will be the AutoStar Suite. Now this AutoStar Suite's pretty cool. Obviously it's not hooked up right now, but the simplicity of it is say you wanted to look at mm, Messier 15. Messier 15, center object, and it goes. So that's as simple as it is. You go there and it will track that for as long as you wish to track it. And this goes across the entire visual the entire sky. Uh, another awesome program that will be utilized is uh, DSO Browser. This DSO Browser will allow the students and allow the teachers a, a just an endless <laughs> supply of targets. And like Rick said, if you wanted to go to whatever galaxies are in the sky tonight, uh, let's say you wanted to go look at galaxy clusters, sort of transit, all right coming up here. So, Bode's Galaxy, Ursa Major. It's super simple to pick out the targets. There's a ton of targets in the sky. Um, and I'm getting off track here. Hold on. So, super, super easy. I love it. That's Mr. Beckley, are you using any of these online resources? I know there's virtual observatories, there's Google Sky, there's all kinds of resources out there. What are you using currently? that this would enhance that you can't access right now? We can look at what other people have done, but this would give us the chance to actually go out there and do the stuff that scientists are doing, to actually do the science ourselves too, which is you know, what we're pushing for in education these days, system education, is getting kids out there and actually doing stuff rather than just reading about what others have done. And beyond that, it's capable, this telescope is capable of finding new stuff Students, if they were dedicated to it, could find their own comet. They could find uh, an asteroid out there that's never been discovered before. So it actually allows them to not just look at science, but actually do the real science. And that's where that extended usage comes from. Mm -hmm. So I found myself in numerous times where I would go out and I would spend a night behind the telescope. And I have my target list set out. And I go, bam, 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 I'll collect as much data as I can. And then I might leave for a work-related trip to be gone. And while I'm all, at my free time on my trip, I've got my laptop open and I'm processing that data. And that data can keep me quite occupied. How you want to stretch it, how you want to look at it, how you want to compile it, what aspects do you want to bring out, what are you specifically looking for. I had one time, which is pretty cool, uh, to talk about how, how dedicated they are. There was one time where I was actually going through a bit of data and had a streak, had a streak, and I was like, oh, man. So then I'm flipping between all my pictures, and I notice, and hey, that streak is about satellite speed. I wonder if that's satellite. So I actually was able to upload that picture to astrometry, 
which is not this database, but I was able to load it up there, actually take a picture, take that picture, analyze exactly where in the sky that picture was, exactly the timestamp of when that picture was taken. I was able to cross-reference that back to a list of known satellites in the time at in the sky at that point in time. I was actually able to find out that it was an abandoned European uh, weather satellite, ERS-2. So uh, it was just neat, weird, quirky things like that. But as far as the depth of usage, when, like he pointed out, you can go out and you can record tons of data and say you have a student group who's really interested in finding asteroids. It's not to say that it won't be a known asteroid, but you can find them. And it might be an unknown asteroid. And the way you do that is you compile these pictures. You essentially, you, will pile, uh, you compile old school flip books. So just like the running man, when you, flip, when you flip the pages, that's what you're looking for. So they can go back and they can actually see movement within the field. And it's, it's just an amazing, an amazing depth of usage that can occur. Summarizing that. what you said through your head. The difference between this and Google Sky is doing research versus reading research. Yeah. That's a mm -hmm. whole other level mm -hmm. of engagement. Mm -hmm. yeah. It makes actually participating in the conversation. Right. Do we want to follow up in a work session then, or is that better, or the next board meeting? I mean, let's get a lot on the agenda. No, it really just depends on what the, it's. I'd say if you get the questions together and get them, yeah, we can do it. You know, I mean, the other question I have, session, you know, you know. the other question I have too, you know, to try to avoid some of the ADA things and all the different pieces. If this is going to be tied in through fiber, anything that's, you know, what do I want to say, that can be accessed on a computer that's tied into that somewhere on the property, why do we even need to have a classroom that's attached to it if a lot of the work's going to be done, not necessarily remotely, but from their computer in Mr. Beckley's room, we could avoid a lot of these hoops by having that on site not necessarily putting all of. Can we just build something yeah, that's just an observatory build itself, the well, smaller yeah. piece, we having that, room? and then everything is done remotely, you know, through here. And granted, kids could still have the ability potentially go out and look through it if they want that actual piece. But if a lot of it's done and the fibers run to a spot, why do we need that? Why do we need a classroom? That's, that would be no. something that would just be met with a discussion. So. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's the aspect of the visual astronomy, but that could be met with small group interaction. So uh, because it would kind of the be only, a win-win, right. right? The only thing I would see, Joe, would be um, the possibility with the classroom. No. <laughs> what I do is you can skin code a lot of different ways, and so you can look at how many people you are going to take out there at any one time, but and make that classroom bigger, smaller, whatever. But one thing that would be nice would be the dedicated monitor wall. One thing that Grant didn't uh, allude to was that he works for Exelon. And Exelon is looking at providing a whole bunch of computers and monitors and everything else, you know, to the project. So when you do it remote access, sure, you know, you can mm -hmm. still have the same capabilities, but go down the elementary Easy level, page. and I don't know if you'd be oh, able no. to touch all of the kids, you know what I'm saying, right. with just a small, uh, laptop monitor and have them all see the thing versus a 50 inch or something on the wall. Or and I think that the classroom would be a more immersive experience for a group of students and I feel like it would pull more students into the ownership of the data and the data processing and all of that stuff if they spend time in the classroom looking at and having that discussion as a, as a class with those and we have 15 stations that Exelon has um, agreed yep. to uh, provide, and they're desktop stations, they're not mm -hmm. laptop stations, mm -hmm. and so to me that just seems like a more immersive experience. It's kind of like if we go on a field trip, mm -hmm. and it's so much more rich and meaningful to be in that place. The outdoor classroom is so much, you know, you can, we can grow a bean plant in the classroom, and we can do this and that, but to actually be in that place, I feel like it's going to touch those kids that aren't as invested in school, if you will, or maybe science, they don't think science is their thing, or they don't think, you know, they don't think they're good at math, and they utilize those things, and it lights them up in that moment. 
I think there's just a lot to explore. There's a I mean, lot. We were approached less than a month ago about this, and this lot is a major undertaking. And so, <laughs> there, well, I just done a lot of work. He has, he has done a lot of work. Yes, he has. I do want to say I'm extremely impressed with how everything you've done up to this point. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Wow. It is. yes. It shows tremendous dedication and thought. I mean, yes. I'm really, I expected, because I know you a little bit, like I expected it to be pretty good. <laughs> but I didn't expect this much. Like, I didn't expect to have this many questions answered. And it's all. really, I mean, so it's, it's really been the different members of the committee speak to what I've done, and it's really what they've done. I mean, I can't speak to design. I'm not an engineer. And Dave has taken mm -hmm. up that torch, and he has done an amazing mm -hmm. job with it. Okay. I can't run around during the day and talk to everybody because I'm elsewhere. She has done that in Spain. Mm -hmm. I, we still get four or five emails I mean, a day from <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. The, the, I mean, people I come out. I, I, I I'm, I'm wondering. I'm wondering who the heck Rick Beckley is because I hear people on my couch talking about Rick. Oh, Rick Beckley's gonna love this. Who's Rick Beckley? <laughs> well, he's a science. Oh no. I was like, oh, science teacher. That's good. No, I mean, he's really. That's his thing. Like, no. <laughs> I mean, the people you got Noah who comes out. Noah's like, oh yeah. <laughs> So what do you think about it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, just the genuine depth of response and the amount that the people have stepped forward. And I think that speaks to, I'm not saying it's going to be easy and I don't expect it to. But I think that speaks to the magnitude of the project and something that is, might, I haven't experienced it. I have never built an observatory. I have never experienced this, so I cannot speak to that process in that way. Have I read the case studies? Yes. Have I read the best practices for engineering? Yes. Have I read how other observatories have been built? Yes. But have I done the fundraising for it? No, I haven't. Yeah. I haven't. Yeah. But okay. we open up our mouth, and I think great things will happen. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, don't, I don't see it being an issue. Okay. So who wants to gather questions in that and get them to Joe? Well, we can, just email, we can just email, email our yeah. questions to him. He can compile them. Yeah. The, 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 the sooner the better. And I'll get you any answer you want. You know, I mean, the right answer. The right answer. Give us an answer. Not just an answer, the right because answer. Because I understand your point completely. The best I work answer. with clients every day. You know, so it doesn't bother me. Okay. I just don't want people to get frustrated because it's going to go slower than you. Oh yeah, no, I, I, I know for us we'll be breaking ground next week, but yeah. it's just the reality is it may be a while before this comes to fruition. But I do know this: if it does come to fruition, it'll be done right. Yes, and it'll be fully funded. Yes, and it'll be an outstanding project. Yes, and we've, and I don't mean this. <laughs> I give the board credit. We've got a, you know experience in doing that from any project we've done. Yeah. It always seems to take longer. Mm -hmm. yeah, so like, please don't but, get frustrated. But we're the end. Nine wood, we've always been pretty pleased with the result. The end product has always been good. Yeah. And I was checking with Melissa to see if this would like raise the value of my home. I thought that might be a nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, the last thing I was going to say is I, I think it'd be neat if you worked with Miss Moritz and Mr. Beckley in the interim with the science club to get an interest and see how the kids take it and go. I mean, would you be in a yeah. half block from your school, where you know right. where you live, or it's, half mile, half mile. block? We, you know what? It's, Get them up Diane, there and <laughs> right, right. Me this thing. And Grant. Exactly. So. Okay. So that's the game plan, right? We'll get questions to Joe. Joe will get them to Diane whatever. and whatever, and we'll just and we then just keep working. I'll contact our attorney. I'll get a bunch of contacts. And do you like the design as it is? That's what I want to know first. You know, because I think. Size I'm still trying to see how this roof is to turn and figure, visualize how this roof well, is Well, there was a, I, he wasn't able to yeah. hold right, hold file. But we can there. talk I, off on the day. Let's, I mean, let's, yeah, we need to keep it. I, I, I can door. send that to you through Joe. It just slides okay. off. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> it, actually, it should work pretty good. Actually, it's pretty crazy simple in yeah. application. Okay. Uh, St. Ambrose University utilizes the same uh, design for one of their observatories. They actually have two. Uh, and they're, one of them is the classic dome style. Uh, we don't want to go with a dome style for this, and the reason why is because that really does restrict us in the long run. Should we decide to put another telescope out there, should we decide that dome restricts it to one? Uh, so the roll-off roof is what they utilize in their second facility, and it's super cool. So it's 
it's really easily designed. Okay. One person operates it. Okay. So, I believe, oh, his name is Kelvin, which I thought was awesome for an astronomer. Mm -hmm. His name is Kelvin, yes. and yes. Kelvin moves it with his hands. So, Definitely. <coughs> Well, Dave, I also right. encourage you to work with Joe Ragus and really yes. start to really focus. And yes. Yeah, you give me the questions. I know Joe will be more than happy to give me questions. <laughs> you'll think, you'll think it some more, Joe. I no, know you honestly, will. I, I enjoy working with people that are upfront and honest. I, mean, I get enough people that don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> so. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. So much. Thank you. So much. Yep. Why don't we take a five minute break to use the restroom and <laughs> tear down? Uh, it's going to be a lot longer than five minutes. Oh, but it's all right. That's okay. It's all right. It's We're here for a while. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Okay. okay. You know, that's Maybe my encouragement. Just just I'll turn this off. Let me turn it back on. Okay. Hey, Noah. I have a favor. Will you press pause on that? Yeah. Please. Oh. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Is it stop? I don't see it. So is there anything, we looked at all this, the only thing we just got now, or most recent, was the bills, right? Yeah. So we need to kind of look at the bills. Right, and the extra payroll and the bills. So if we just go to the bills and if you want to take a couple minutes to look through them, I don't think there's anything different or new or really special. Is there, Joy? Run in the mill. You know, this month's a short one. You know, having a two week Christmas break. Yeah, correct. Which is so, good. So yeah. Usually this means right. anyway, a bit light in that department. I didn't but see anything. I don't want to see anything in bills either. No, that's out of the ordinary. I was going to say with the extra payroll, that's probably it's just the. It's a short same list. Old, same old. Right. I mean, there's nothing. No, it's, I looked through that before. Yeah. Um, no. Hmm. Okay, yeah, it looks. Make a motion to approve the bills. Second. Those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Um, any questions for Denise? Anything did you, do you want to share with us, Denise, just quickly or that Stand really pops out? Cool. That's different this year. Which one? Your science night. Uh, for your STEM. Yeah, I Next saw week. that. Yeah, that's, uh, that's our usual literacy night. Yeah. We coupled it with Iowa State Extension. Must have been there coming out and helping us. So all of the sessions good. that you see have science ties, and that's so it's got a science component to it. But it's all tied to a book that the teachers are reading that week cool. prior. Yeah, it's all good. Uh, PD oh, day, yeah. twelfth will be packed, and the family fun night comes right away mm -hmm. on the eighth. And then we have mm -hmm. a mention convention, two math bees coming up, science bowl, and the two choral. We, we split fifth and sixth grade this year, so we have two different high choirs. Because the number of kids interesting. Good. Mm -hmm. We or me, they're coming the 31st again. Um, getting our action teams, see where we're at. Good. And preschool registration, February 1. Boy. Mm -hmm. As we go. Whipping right in. <laughs> downhill slide after it's Christmas break. Mr. Burnett always says. Closer to August, yes. Well, what's all about next August. year? Yep. Going quick. Got any inventions going to the convention? Yes. Uh, she wasn't sure how many I asked Mrs. Hewitt. Uh, you know, that's kind of a home thing that they, you know, she starts them and helps them, but they do a lot. And so she wasn't exactly sure how many would actually make the competition. So I'll let you know. Okay. Good. All right. A lot of interest. Thank you, Mrs. Austin. Um, junior High Board Report, Athletics. Okay. Shall we to get to consent agenda number one? If everyone's ready? Mm -hmm. yep. All righty. Yep. Just one job description, transportation director. Reviewed this month. <coughs> no resignations or terminations I'm aware of. Good. <laughs> Good. Move right. to approve consent agenda number one. 
Second. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Consent agenda number two. These are right from the state in terms okay. of uh, communicable diseases. Last month, you know, when we had our conversation about, I've done this for a few years now, and my philosophy is this. It would be nice in our board policy manual, and I know I, I like Utopia, and that doesn't exist, but we repeat so many state laws, mandates, requirements, et cetera, in our board policy manual, which isn't bad on the one hand because it's a constant reminder of what those are. Mm -hmm. Okay? Right. The problem with that is if the state changes something and we review it once every four years and we don't go in that manual that's you know thicker than the Bible mm -hmm. and find it, or we might not be in compliance. Right. And so what I'm always trying to do is narrow the scope as much as possible, A, to make it so we're in compliance, and B, so there's not a lot of redundancy. Mm -hmm. Last month we were talking about the HEP B under the HEP you know, the, the one that we're approving the second reading tonight under employee physical examinations. Mm -hmm. We already have policies about Hep B and communicable diseases in 4033 and 4033.3E1. Mm -hmm. And yet the state throws in Hep B under employee physical examinations policies. So when I visit with Joy on this stuff, we're trying to eliminate redundancy and just put it where it needs to be. And again, shrink it where we can. Mm -hmm. What I was going to say in my utopian handbook is we'd have a policy yeah, that says the school state district state follows state all state district state guidelines. State there state you go. Laws, period. State of Iowa code. Because that would eliminate three fourths of our manual. <laughs> right. So, but that's just my frustration of working with it right. over these years. And so I'm always trying to eliminate it where we can. So I apologize if it seems like, why is he taking this? Out? Well, it's already listed in another spot. Right. So when you get to the second reading, you'll notice in the physical <laughs> examinations, it repeats itself from the Hep B vaccine that we already do. That being said, I have nothing <laughs> to recommend <laughs> under... For consent agenda two? Right. Okay. Moves approved, consent agenda number two. Second. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. All right, individual action items. And it's just that policy from last month that I asked to strike what we weren't doing with our policy yep. in terms of the physical yep. reimbursement. Mm -hmm. yep. And then also, again, it was talking about HEP B, which is repeated in 4033 and 4033E1. Question, how often do, does the state change these codes? Do we get a printout of them so we can take them out and slide them in? or? Well, a lot of times, for example, Heather Hartley, our school nurse, yeah. that's her ex expertise or forte, Correct. and they contact Heather, and she does it. Mm -hmm. You know, regardless of, I was joking with someone, that if let's say, I don't know, I say this little flip because it wouldn't be the case, but let's say the school board, let's say that um, the school board set the speed limit for the buses at 65, but the state said the law was 55. It doesn't matter what our policy says. We go by the state. Correct. Mm -hmm. Regardless of what the policy mm -hmm. means Correct. states. Correct. Okay? Mm -hmm. So okay. the people that are interacting with the state, whether it's the nurse, whether it's Mr. Meyer, with what the well, curriculum anything, pieces, anything. the state trumps anything we okay. have in writing. So it, I just like them to align. It really doesn't matter. No. We will find out. I mean, if that was my point, is if we, they change I'll, things, we need to do it, do they let us know to say, oh, If it's major we, enough. They will. Right, if but not, if it's some okay. simple wording or whatnot, the state policy always trumps our policy. Okay. All right. Just makes it challenging on and navigating through what's been changed and what hasn't okay. because it's been so thick. All right. So. So I'm asking for the second reading under only oh, has one individual action item. So, what we discussed last time. Mm -hmm. right. We'll approve the second reading of policy code four hundred three point one. Second. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. All right, information discussion items. I want to commend Mike Dolfo for applying for the crossing guard position. Mm -hmm. um, he yeah. started, it was almost seamless, wasn't it, Joe? Yeah. That was our Christmas Good. miracle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so to find somebody yeah, that, that. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't happen very often. At all. You know your heart's in the right place when it's covered in two layers of card heart. That's right. Yeah, <laughs> that's, take a crossing jump, that's, crossing guard position in January. Not a coveted job. So, anyway, good. You can see what his contract looks like, et cetera. But okay. um, he started, and um, again, 
very pleased that that occurred. Under the maintenance piece, um, you know, that, that severe cold snap that we had over Christmas break, we were having some issues with our train units and whatnot, and, okay. and uh, they got out here and uh, got those fixed, just like a lot of facilities. Yes. You know, you find out <laughs> where your system's at when it gets to be 10 below zero. So. Correct. Yeah. Um, Joe's completely done with the two locker room projects. Oh. Look outstanding. So yeah. kudos to you on that, Joe. But like all projects, <laughs> that was something we planned for two years. Uh -huh. And we got a really good end game. Uh -huh. Right. So good work. Uh, you know, and just visiting with Joe, too, we're really looking at summer projects from the bleacher projects that we talked about, uh -huh. uh, the flooring, uh -huh. and we're really positioning ourselves to have an aggressive summer. So I'm excited about that. Good. I'd like to meet with the maintenance committee sometime in February. You know, yeah, are we touching week. the visitor stands by the football field? Yes. Okay. That's something that's been brought up for a number of years, and, mm -hmm. and I'm Joe's getting bids. If you want to tell them where we're at on that. That's your bleacher project. Bid. What's that? That's your bleacher project. Mm -hmm. We already got Tony's. <laughs> Tony's has already done Tony, finally. You've already had your one bleacher now, project. Now, this, 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 this is one. Rob. <laughs> well, no, I mean, we've heard from other people, too. I won't. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to throw Robert at the bleachers say this from throughout the years. That, yes. you know, our, our visitor sideline could use a little bit of an upgrade. Obviously, you want to take care of your home site first. first. But I think we're at the point where we could do some work over there. We've talked about doing a little grade work to bring it up. So it gives us, you know, it's sitting on that berm. Yeah. Okay. So if we can bring the grade work up a little bit, put some type of, I'll call retaining wall. But well, I, what are you gonna speaking do? with Joe, I didn't decide what we should put. And I'm going to get prices from Jake on that. Okay. Is in front of that, the new bleachers I've got him getting me price on are 10, 10 high as far as 10 uh, rows high. So we'll keep the same distance, but they'll get a little wider. And we just bring that pad out, bring a pad and a okay. sidewalk all the way along the fence so people oh, can walk nice. down the sidewalk. Yep. But it'll go closer bleachers. to the fence, so we'd have to do something right. about that burn. Bring that, so right. we'll, yeah, we'll bring that up and. I, I'll have all that for you sometime. But we'll okay. get Maybe even to tip them. They came so up with color schemes. They wanted to gym painted, so we'll have to get them out. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah, they, they have. They're higher. Kind of burned up a little sure. bit. Yeah. So they'll stay at the same height. Yeah. Well, sure. The seating higher. higher. See it above the. Exactly. Yeah, It'll just come to the west. Yeah. yeah. But you're mm -hmm. right. The visitors set higher. Uh -huh. there. Yes. Yeah. Because so they're, they'll be above the fence. So when you're looking. Oh, okay. Sure. But we'll have. We, we do it with the concrete down below, then they just walk down the sidewalk, mm -hmm. up a couple of steps to the bleachers, sure. and then they get on the bleachers, but they'll be 10 rows high, so we'll get... Can you say 400 seats? There's a lot of oh. you know, four seats. Oh, yeah. person plenty, plenty of seats. And Good. it really improves the viewing from the fence. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. It basically mirrors our home side, where mm -hmm. you can stand along there, mm -hmm. and yeah. right. we don't have that right. now. Right. Sure. And someone, again, that's... God bless, it's, you know, wheelchair accessible. Right. Yeah. They can go all the way down there. So yeah, it'll that'll really be an improvement. So we're looking at that. Good. We'll be able to view, all right, fall off. Have your wheelchair. That's well, they can at least get there. Get there. Yeah. You know, and that's. Yeah, they need to get there. Okay. Our handicap deck is still by far, and we're the only school that I'm aware of that has that. Mm -hmm. It's really nice for those that have to be in a wheelchair. Mm -hmm. right? Right. And we would let them park right behind the mm -hmm. ICN yeah. room, the Ag building, mm -hmm. and it's yeah. right across. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, that's something else that we're looking at. Visitors, bleachers, in the gym, too, right? Yep, yeah. yep. And we're also, Joe was starting to talk about this, we're getting bids to get the big gym painted. Oh, yep. Mm -hmm. And oh. get some new paint down there, too, so. Yeah, we have all that scheduled for basically the month of June, from the floor out front, sure. getting ripped out, to the new floor put in, to the gym bleachers getting tore out and put in. Okay. To the painting it, so all that's already scheduled Good. to be done. So we're right, boom, 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 and it's all right. So the month of June, pretty much nobody's coming to that gym. That's okay. But we've got all that scheduled. Mark Good. knows about it. He's got all the coaches know Good. about it. So and obviously we're looking at the boiler system. You know, so yeah. that replaces summer. So like I said, it'll be an aggressive summer. You know, you Good. think you've got a new building. As far as boiler goes, just for your quick info, uh, they've come, looked at it all. They've they are drawing up prints as we speak right now to get things drawn up. I, every time he, uh, they give me any questions, I just shoot back answers to him on what he wants to know. And uh, Vic's got things rolling along, so Good. we should hopefully have something in the next month or so that we can present to you, and then you can say, here's what we want to do, and 
then we'll get it upgraded. Yep. We also get the roof put on the, over the top of the uh, band room yep. and all that area that's already set up to be done mm -hmm. this in the summer. So there's a lot of things already set mm -hmm. up and ready to go. Good. We're still investigating the air, you know, the air conditioning piece too as far as individual rooms. Uh, yeah. Right, I'll get mm -hmm. quite some Yes, we need to do. To take to, Good. To you know, it's interesting that it made me think of that. I was in Iowa City, my daughter goes to school there and she plays club volleyball. And they have portable classrooms at Southeast Junior mm -hmm. High. And they just have that unit sitting right against them, attached to the school. And really doesn't look that bad. It's not as big as you'd think. No, they're pretty the air small. conditions each yeah. one of those rooms. Yeah. Well, good. So, <coughs> we need some. Yeah. Yeah. The air yeah. conditioning units attached to the school? Mm -hmm. oh. For each room, just like yeah. we talked each about room. doing. A little, yeah, you'll yeah. talk yeah. about yeah. doing a unit. Well, yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm, okay. I'm saying there's options out there, and I thought that was fascinating. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, oh, yeah. I think everyone tends to think, oh, if you're going to have some unit sitting, well, it's going to like each, those, you know, like uh, apartments or condos, right. where yeah. you got those units out there. The yeah. Yeah. Really, it, it was just attached right to the school, and it kind of blended. I, yeah. I thought, wow. Cool. Yeah, they're pretty compact. Yeah, and getting better. I mean, you know, yeah. they're, mm -hmm. so anyway, they're that's just cheaper. So, yeah. Box right. of Kimono right in the cafeteria. I mean, it's. You, you did, you did the whole floor in there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's they all did the whole, yeah, they, 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 when they figured it, they only figured the biggest section of it, and I said, no, I want the hallways done, plus we didn't think about the bathrooms. Oh, yeah. And they redid yeah. the bathrooms, which Joe has done, and they're so much better there. Is it? Now we can actually scrub them, and it's smoother, it's... Good. Do they look cleaner? I mean, it's well, that, it's that dark nice light. Nice and shiny. Yeah. Well, they will clean, oh, the bathrooms look... Yeah, that's the bathrooms on that. Yeah, because our problem before was it was gritty. So gritty. Yeah, there right. Was it was under them. Yeah, and it was so worn down even where there was getting dirt in the the grid of it, you couldn't even clean it. Yeah. Now it's smooth. It's it's yeah. They look, yeah, they tons just better. They didn't look good at all. Those yeah, bathrooms. They, they look and are so much easier to clean because now a mop actually slides across it and you can actually mop it. Well, that's well, dirt can't hide. That's yeah, helpful. It's not under the, it's yeah. the bathroom. And kudos to my cleaning crew because they busted their butts cleaning that, getting everything really clean. So when they came that day to, to do it, Good. they were ready to go. Good. So all the corners on the wall, I mean, they cleaned, 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 took the steamer in there, which has been a good thing to have, do all the edges, all that. So good. They do a, they've been doing a good job. Last two things I have. One of the things we talked about at our work session in December, I got a hold of Annette Clay's about trying to get an oh. IDB just to kick off mm -hmm. meeting, but also yeah. share, you know, what we yeah. talked about with the Durant possibility, et cetera. Yeah. And Lynette told me if it worked for the board, she could make it work for us. Typically, our first meeting lasts 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. We set the dates, we talk about what's going on. Right. A little bit, you know, just get the ball rolling. She said it would work to me on Wednesday, January 24th at 5 o'clock, which I thought really? would be ideal. You know, mm -hmm. we're always trying to mm -hmm. not take another night. Mm -hmm. That may mean, depending on how long our public forum goes at 6 that night, you know, we'll have our work session until we're done. But if we can do IBB at 5, we have our public uh, forum at 6. What were you going to say? It's from 6 to 7? You said Well, it's going to be for what? 12. The work session or no, the forum? No, the forum. Well, the forum's going to be kind of like well. the calendar hearing. Who shows up? Mm -hmm. Correct. So I'm just saying I we don't know shoot, how long. I just thought it'd be an hour. Could be. I don't know. But you're right. Okay. Go as long as yeah. Have to, I guess. We'll see. Depends on what's going on. No, all right. And that's fine because I I can stay all night that night. So. Oh well, lucky you. Well, it worked out perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> no pun intended. The, the stars are aligned. Aren't you special, <laughs> Tony? All right. But, public forum. So anyway, that'll be a busy okay, evening with IVB at five. Okay. The time we have in between be IBB and 6, we can prep for the 6 o'clock meeting, but also talk about other things that we have at hand, the you know, observatory, etc. Mm -hmm. um, but even, but after the public forum, we talked about it would be nice to have time to go back and discuss anything that was brought up at the public forum, but also, mm -hmm. you know, talk about anything else. We've always got things to hammer out. But, are you okay with that? Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. And... I think that'll be good to give us a little bit of prep time between IBB and the public forum because Stacy's going to go over the information, you know, that she shared with the boards and whatnot, um, just so we kind of, you know, 
have a game plan going into that. And that'll give us a little time to do that. And then our regular, regular, next regular meeting is Monday, be, February 12th. It'd be regular. <laughs> next regular. <laughs> you like that? It'd be regular. 5.30 here. We are creating language. Um, but don't we need to, um, this public forum, don't we need to, we need to get it out there that we're doing that? Well, Brandy will put that in the paper. It's okay. not like a hearing. That's what I mean. Right, but... A we, hearing, you actually have to publish correct. a notice. Right. right. But since she's not here and we're not really saying, I just Joy, want to Joy, when sure. Brandy calls tomorrow, because she she typically calls Joy on night she has to leave early, yeah. please make sure that's a point of emphasis. Okay. That we're having, because yeah, we are... Mm -hmm. something to say. Because okay. we are entertaining okay. the fact that... Really. Well, Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And anyone that has questions that wants to come voice their concern. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And okay. I will say this, Thank if you. the board gets to the point where they want to move forward with this type of project, I don't think it'd be a bad idea to have you know, also. a couple of board members serve on the committee to oversee some of this too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Correct. So we'll be thinking about that. We'll talk about that at the work I session, but that was going through my mind during this too. Seven o'clock. So All right. is there anything else? Legislative session kicks off this week, so. Pool board meeting Wednesday at 6.30. Yeah. All right. I remember. Thank you. <laughs> I hope I still remember. You better remember. Can I make a motion well, to adjourn? Please. Oh. Did we? Oh. I didn't get a packet yet, but mm. probably tomorrow. No, I haven't seen it either. Probably tomorrow. Okay. No, I haven't seen it. If, if not, we're just done discussing, we can't adjourn and then keep talking. Okay. Are we done? Sorry. Okay, I'm done. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, thank you, everyone.